Hi there, my name's Al Hayward, and I am a MoneyWorks consultant, and we're about to uh, redo some videos for you on how to use MoneyWorks. I uh, say redo because I foolishly trashed all the ones I have before. So now we're on MoneyWorks 7. I'm using MoneyWorks Gold, but the steps I'm going to walk you through today in creating that company file can be done on MoneyWorks Express or MoneyWorks Cashbook. So let's start. Okay, when you first install MoneyWorks, you come to a welcome screen where it says welcome up top here, and you've got some options. One, you can go to tutorial, and you can see a PDF that will walk you through step by step how to use this sample file. And the sample file is a file called Acme Widgets, and the tutorial refers to it, and it walks you through all the important things you need to do, need to know about running MoneyWorks. Or you can go to the extensive MoneyWorks manual, or you can just watch this video and learn how to do it the quick way. So let's say like we want to create a new company, set up a new company accounts document. Let's say, yep, that's what we want to do. It automatically comes up saying the Lohman Group, MWD7, which is the, act, uh, the extension for all MoneyWorks files, MWD7, in 7. And... It says Loma Group because that's the name of my computer, and it puts a default of documents as the where it's going to save this file. That's important to know because every time you go to save something in MoneyWorks, it defaults to your documents folder, which is usually okay, except for our uh, new file we're going to create, we're going to throw it on the desktop. So I'm going to do, I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to do a Command D, which is something I learned about a year ago after using a Mac for 50 years. But Command D selects the desktop, and I'm going to save the file to the desktop once it's created. All right, set up a new company uh, file, or a new document, as MoneyWorks calls it. There are four steps. The first step is the company information. Well, in this case, it's called the Lohman Group, but you can call it whatever you want. You can put in your address, 123 Main Street. Oh, got my caps on, but that's all right. Oops, Main Street, turn off my caps. In MoneyWorks, because it was in New Zealand, they have a problem with um, states, provinces, cities, etc., because they don't have any. So we have this little cross North American um, thing because I'm using a North American package where the using the term state for which could be the state or province when I hold it over and they're using the postal code which could be or the postcode which could be the postal code in Canada or zip code in the US. You'll note that there's no city file but what we're going to do is we're going to put the city in the fourth line one, two, three, four, and that's where it's going to be. And we're going to be in the great city of Toronto, home of Mayor Ford, and at least for a while. And uh, our state's going to be Ontario, and our postal code's going to be, I'll use an American one, two, three, four, five, six zip code, just because I want to confuse things. You could fill in the country if you want, doesn't matter. You can place your phone number. The thing is, I could copy and paste these down here if my address, oops, sorry. Command X, get rid of that, repaste. If my address was the same as above. Um, since I'm going to work on a Canadian file right now, and we'll do a US one separately, this is where I put my email address, which is kind of, uh, I can use my company website, which I can add a link to my uh, forms I create. Uh, this is a remittance message that would you could set up to automatically go in all your uh, all your invoices that says please pay this to this account, that kind of thing. Um, you have a GST HST number that you can place in here, which in the US changes to just a uh, company ID number. And there's also a company registration number for the, in Canada, provinces that have dual taxation. There's a little tab here called Logo, which if I click, opens up uh, an area where I can actually go and import my logo from my desktop or wherever I want to keep it, which I'm not going to do right now. And um, again, I can. Uh, it's it's used for your standard default forms. It'll put a logo on the top of them and all that kind of stuff. Doesn't hurt to do it, but we're not going to do it right now. All of these details within the um, uh, company details, which is what this is called, company details, can be accessed later on under the show menu at the top here and see if it shows there. Yeah, once this file's set up, I could go down here to uh, 
company details, which if I right there, and this this same thing would open up and I could change them or update them or whatever I want. All right, that's that one. Periods. Periods are really, this is an important one. This is your financial year, and you want to set this correctly. Your financial year can't be, say, January to December or any other timeline throughout um, the year. It could be July to June or whatever. We're going to say January to December just because it makes sense to me. The start year, what year are you starting in? And it goes back to 2008 and up to 2015 for now. Uh, we're going to say 2014 since that's the year we're in. If I click the um, more options here, this is just a um, gold feature that I could access them here. This is where if I need to set up a 13 period year or uh, other uh, financial information about my year that's different than a standard, I could set it here. If I wanted to go all the way back to 2001, I could actually make those changes here so I was dealing with 2001. Um, these, this, though I said this is a gold feature, let me get back in there for you. This is a gold feature. I'm going to say fewer options, go to fewer options. Um, this is the gold feature. I can access that under um, a different window, under the show menu again, uh, when I'm in Express or Cashbook. So I have that feature. It's just that with gold, they put a little button here. Don't worry about it. The important thing to do is to say 214. Notice how I had to reset that because it defaults back. So make sure that I don't keep opening the window. And my year starts, my financial year starts in January and ends in December. Even though I might be starting this file in June, my financial year is that period of time. Important one to know. Okay, now the important one's over. Let's check the other ones. Okay, under accounts, I'm in Canada. I could also be in US because this is a North American one. I'm going to say Canada for now. And if I'm in Canada, I get to pick my province or state as they call it in New Zealand, which is kind of important because there's different tax uh, setups for the various provinces. I'm going to say that I am in BC and I'm in Canada. If I was the US, I would go US and note I don't have the state thing because your taxation is more, I wouldn't say simple, but it's not as structured where Canada, Canada has this dual taxation thing going on. God bless America. So I'm going to say Canada. I'm going to say BC. And it gives you different um, layouts. If you're in the advertising agency, you would go to that one, and it would have um, layouts for your chart of accounts that would be more in tune to an advertising agency or such. Uh, minimal, which some people pick because they want to be simple, doesn't give you a working chart of accounts. What it does is it gives you just set accounts, and you would use this minimal if you wanted to create every account manually by yourself or if you were importing your chart of accounts which you can do with MoneyWorks. Generally speaking you would take general business because it's a basic one and you can make all your changes. If you're not sure what all of these whether these are the right accounts for you and you want to make some uh, more learner decision on which one to pick you can print this by clicking that and saying, yep, I want to print it, and then you could obviously put it out to P, uh, paper, if you chose printer, etc., or Word or whatever, or you can put it to a PDF file. Notice that. It's kind of interesting. This is something on your output you're going to see in all the different forms, and at least most of them, all the different forms and reports, you'll have options of how you want to send things out. You can send it out to Excel, or send it out to Numbers. Um, you can send it out to Word, obviously. Um, which will go into pages if you're like a true blue Mac person, etc. Okay. In this case, we're not going to print it because pick general business. Let's be simple. We can always get rid of the ones we don't want and the ones we need. We'll show you that in the next video. So I'm going to say use. I'm in Canada. I'm in BC. I'm in general business. I'm going to say use. Got that one. Okay. Tax setup. I need to account for tax. Well, I'm definitely in Canada. I need to. Most likely you do in the States. Here you can say I need to account for tax. And is it invoice basis on my income or payment basis? In Canada, it's always invoice basis. You don't have the option. 
In the U.S., you do have options in some states. You might not have to account for tax, or you might want to say, no, it's payment basis. The difference here is, if it's invoice basis, I collect the tax when I create the invoice. Therefore, I have to show that I collected it at that period of time. If it's cash basis, or payments basis, as they list here, that means I only have to show that I collected the tax when I collected the money. It gives you that extra month if you got huge terms or more if you got terms. Like I said, in Canada, it's invoice basis. You don't have the option. Your reporting cycle can be monthly, two-monthly, quarterly, six-monthly, or whatever period of time you want to set up. We're going to leave it at monthly because, again, this is something I can change when I'm doing my tax reporting. So it's not... What I put here is an etched in stone. This is probably the most important part of this one. I'm going to say OK. We have now completed the four steps to create a file. I'm going to say accept. And MoneyWorks pops up and says, oh, well, if you know what your bank balances are, here's four bank accounts and a credit card you can put balances into, which if I had a positive balance, I would put 23, $234. And I could change the name of the account, call it TD or whatever. Uh, if I was overdrawn, I would put, click the overdrawn, and it would automatically put me overdraft of 234. I don't need the negative. Basically, I'd skip that. And boom, we have our company file. So now we, what we've done is we have created a company file. It's taken us right to the getting started setup stage. I can see that my financial year was set up properly. I can see that my locale is Canada. I can see that um, I'm in BC. <laughs> if I was in Quebec in this case, I could say, no, I want to put the dollar sign. I could actually change it now. If I was in Quebec, I could say, I want to put my dollar sign or whatever I wanted to put, and I could put it after. Okay. If I was using multiple currencies, I could go to set that up now, but we're going to talk about that, and we can set up a lot of different multiple currencies. We'll talk about that later. What we've done right now is we've created a company file and that we can get started with. Okay, and we'll be back with more in the next video. Hope this works. Talk to you later. Al, check it out.